Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here with us for Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. We want to get straight to the top stories that you need to know right now, beginning with President Trump and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin now saying they are hoping to get your stimulus checks to you in two weeks. They just announced that about an hour ago. They're now expediting the original deadline of three weeks and also loans for small businesses will start tomorrow. Mnuchin is encouraging those businesses to reach out to lenders and to rehire hire employees they may have laid off. They need the money now. What we're going to do is, again, if we have your information, you'll get it in two, in, within two weeks. If you, Social Security, you'll get it very quickly after that. If we don't have your information, you'll have a simple web portal, you'll upload it. If we don't have that, we'll send you checks in the mail. In the meantime, the president is now pushing to wear masks for almost all Americans when you leave the house. These new guidelines are another effort to combat the growing spread of coronavirus. Also, here locally, the Spokane drive through coronavirus testing site is still at the fairgrounds, but now at a new location. This new location there inside the Barn A building. So to get to this new testing site, again, it's still at the fairgrounds, but you need to enter through the gates on Broadway over by the horse barns. The federal government has sent several thousand COVID-19 tests to Washington. They're still hard to come by, so a lot of people have been asking why some of them are sitting unused right now in storage in the midst of this major shortage of COVID-19 tests. Our sister station in Seattle found there were between 1,000 and 1,500 surplus tests for days that have just been sitting at the health department in Tacoma. The city councilman there says the tests actually, though, belong to FEMA. Yes, we're going to redeploy those tests. Now it's just a matter of calling up and saying, well, FEMA just told, you know, the news that is us. So health department officials now saying they are planning to deploy those tests using the, a smaller number of coronavirus testing sites. Pullman Regional Hospital has announced it is now cutting employee pay across the board for by 25%. That will be in place for at least the next 60 days. The cut will affect all hourly and salary, salaried employees. The move is supposed to free up about a million dollars in cash, which the hospital says they are running extremely low on right now. The hospital says other small hospitals in Washington are having the same problem. Many have less than 30 days cash on hand and are actually in danger of closing. The budget issues stem from postponing elective surgeries and outpatient procedures because of the outbreak. Meanwhile, nurses across Washington say they need more answers in the response to this outbreak. The Washington State Nurses Association is now calling on local, state and federal governments to provide transparent, updated information on the response to this pandemic. In a press release, a spokesperson for the association says we also need accurate and updated information on testing, how long tests are taking to process, how many healthcare workers and first responders have been tested and the results of those tests. Yesterday, Governor Jay Inslee called for the state's manufacturers to start volunteering to help create more personal protective equipment. Meanwhile, Spokane saw a 38% increase in unemployment benefit claims just last week. Data from the Washington State Employment Security Department now shows 181,975 new claims filed for the week of March 22nd through the 28th. That's a 3,500% increase in new claims. Looking at the bigger picture, the weekly jobless claims numbers also out for the U.S. And as expected, the coronavirus pandemic has forced a record number of Americans to look for help. The Department of Labor right now says 6.6 .6 million people have filed for initial unemployment benefits just last week. Right now, that is double the claims from the previous week, also a high. The, a business analyst says this economic problem simply will not be a quick fix. Now, we want to help you. If you have been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, just text us. All you have to do is text one word, jobs, to 509-448-2000, and we will send you a link of all the places in this area that are hiring right now. New at four, uh, a resident at a Cheney nursing home has tested positive for the coronavirus. The Cheney Care Center says the patient was recently tested and hospitalized on Monday. They're now in quarantine at a local hospital. A spokesperson says there are no other confirmed cases, although residents there are being monitored closely for symptoms. 
Meanwhile, the Kirkland nursing home at the epicenter of this entire national outbreak is now facing a fine of more than $600,000. They could actually lose Medicare and Medicaid funding. Federal investigators say Life Care Center failed to report an outbreak of respiratory illness back in February. 37 people tied to that facility have now died from the coronavirus. All right, let's take a break from coronavirus here and talk about weather. Seems like we definitely got a little bit of a final taste of winter as we headed into <laughs> April. Tom Sherry is standing by now. And boy, I think everyone was out enjoying the blue skies that we got to see today. Yeah, it was absolutely a fantastic day today. We had that sunshine, temperatures still below average, but come with me now over to the Storm Tracker 2 remote weather window and we take a look outside. Oh, look, there there are the neighbors right there. How are you, like girls? Good to see you. That is Brookie and Ellie. And as we take a look up, we've got mostly cloudy skies right now, a little bit of blue sky out there, but we're all practicing our social distancing. Nice to see you, ladies. There they are, aren't they? Very, very pretty. So uh, as mostly cloudy skies outside right now, we take a look at the Doppler radar and most of the showers now have moved over into areas of northern Idaho. There you can see it right there, a little bit of a snow shower activity all to the east of us. So we haven't seen the rain here locally and I'm kind of give you a closer view with the Doppler radar. Again, uh, those showers are mostly in northern Idaho uh, along I, uh, north of I-90 and south of I-90. I do think though we'll see a few a chance of a few showers this evening. Boy, it certainly is chilly. 43 degrees right now. Wind is out of the west at 15 miles per hour. We take a look at your day planner forecast. Could get a few snow showers overnight tonight, like around 3 a.m. of all times. Uh, 29 will be the overnight low. I've got partly cloudy skies tomorrow with passing showers. And Whitney, more and more, it looks like those showers may come around, like, say, this time or dinner time uh, on Friday. We'll look for a daytime high of 44. It will get windy uh, Friday afternoon when we take a look at the weekend forecast uh, temperatures are expected to hit a little warmer than what I said yesterday. I've got 50 on Saturday mostly dry weather a slight chance of a few showers on Sunday and then a daytime high of 52. I'll check your seven day forecast which may include a temperature in the 60s. All that's coming up in just about 10 minutes back to you. I like the sounds of that Tom Sherry. Thank you very much. All right, here is what you need to know right now about our coronavirus numbers locally. Here in Spokane County, a total of five people have now died from the virus. Spokane County Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz is confirming now a total of 182 confirmed cases, 30 people currently being hospitalized because of the virus. Statewide numbers show almost 250 deaths in Washington, about 6,000 confirmed cases overall. That is about an 8% or about 8% of the tests that are coming back positive. 92% right now are coming back negative. Three students at the University of Idaho have tested positive for coronavirus. This is in Canyon County. One is an 18 year old student. That person was on campus last week and we're told is experiencing mild symptoms. Another is a 21 year old student based out of Boise and the third is a 38 year old graduate student who mostly attends school electronically statewide. Also in Idaho, 669 confirmed cases. In the wake of this coronavirus outbreak, Rathdrum's Senior Center has become a donation hub for those in need. As volunteers make and deliver meals for seniors who can't leave their homes, local businesses are pitching in with donated food and supplies. As Taylor Vito explains, that response has been a citywide effort. We'll take a look at all this. These are just some of the donations that have come into the senior center here in Rathdrum and volunteers here say this isn't just a story about them and what they're doing here, but rather the whole community coming together. How you doing? From the outside, it was the handoff of a meal or two. Four chicken noodles. Older folks in need were lining up to pick up meals at the Rathdrum Senior Center. No surprise, the center has suspended its regular activities in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak, so meals were being made to go. We have a lot of people in the community that have needs. The center has shifted to become the de facto hub of Rathdrum's community response. This shot in particular sums up what's been going on here. In the foreground, a senior picking up a meal, and in the background, someone dropping off donations for homebound seniors in need. Inside, the stockpile continued to grow. It grabs at your heartstrings. Everything from pet food to those other supplies that have been a hot commodity lately. An estimated 600 rolls of toilet paper have been donated here. I've lived here my whole life and 
that's Rafter. I mean, right. when st something happens, we have an issue or a problem, people step up. Eric Singer Business is the Parks and Rec and Director for the city. With only so much work to do in parks right now, he stepped up to help out the Senior Center collecting donations. Local businesses have been chipping in too. It's kind of gratifying for us to be able to come here, um, pick up food, deliver it to those that, that need the food. In terms of financial donations, the Senior Center says the community has chipped in thousands to help fund the effort, and home delivery services to seniors have expanded. Makes you want to feel like you want to be a part of this community. A community that, in the face of coronavirus, is showing what it's truly made of. In Rathdrum, Taylor Vido, Krem 2 News. And a huge thank you to all of those volunteers. All right, coming up here at 4.30 tonight, we will be hosting our coronavirus question and answer special. And today we're talking about homeschooling as so many of you are suddenly in that position of trying to homeschool your kids. We are now about two weeks into the statewide school closure. So many parents kind of running low on lessons and maybe some patience. Uh, today we will be joined by an expert from Spokane Public Schools to answer your top homeschooling questions. So Make sure and start texting those right now. Just text to text your question to 509-448-2000 and we'll try to get you some answers. Creme 2 News, we'll be right back.